for joining us in our investment sales Zoom session. Um, let's get this. Let's get this started. So, first off, if we could go to the next slide. I want to make sure that everybody's aware of the conference, the summit coming up in the fall in Atlanta. I'm, I'm certain that everyone on this call is aware and, and you know the value of attending these conferences. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. Is that is that set up yet? Is that live, Jennifer? Or we still need to wait a few months? Registration should be coming in June. And June, Diane okay. can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it'll be live in June. Yep, Good. registration and housing will open. Uh, we usually do it mid or end of June. But we'll send you lots of emails, Phil. You won't be able to ignore us. <laughs> and, and put the pressure on all your people. The more people we have there, obviously, the more powerful the summit. I agree. Yep. So in addition to that, remind everybody of the online platform. These calls are great, but throughout the year, you can put your listings on this online platform. You can email every member of the organization your listings and make sure that you're getting it out there effectively. So if, you, if anyone has any questions on how to use this, you can reach out to Jennifer or Jonathan. And uh, the more listings that are on there, obviously, the more powerful it is for all of our members. So with that, we can move right into our presentation. Yeah, huh. right out the gate. Yep. You're yeah. Up John, you on the call? I saw him somewhere. Here, Cole. I'm right, right here, Cole. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, John. So, hey, John. John's in our Oakland office uh, for TRI. And we just picked up uh, uh, John, myself, and Ed Del Picaro, 60,000 square foot uh, Delta Dental building. Uh, in Sacramento, and it's it's part of their California campus that they're giving back due to COVID. So uh, they, we can offer, you know, ours is 60, but we can get up to you know, about 233,000 square feet there. What makes it unique, it, it's an office setting, but uh, it's parked for a call center. It also has a dock level loading, but the biggest thing is uh, it, it also has a data center in the campus. So uh, it's got backup generators on site. We have the ability to expand uh, to, from 20 to 30 megawatts, which is very rare. And it's very difficult to do in California. So the infrastructure is in place with the generators and the, the powers there um, through, the, through the city to, to really uh, put this thing on steroids for a full-blown data center. So it's got raised floor, but also the floor is uh, recessed about two feet uh, below the raised floor. So um I guess it's the same thing, one and the same, but uh, very, very nice facility. Um, and again, this is a part of Delta Dental's uh, California headquarters here. So, John, you have anything to add? No, that's that's perfect. Um, just really would like to hear from the floor if they have any uh, needs for this uh, for this trade area. So, question: Is it built out dental? The space. No, it, it was their, you know, uh, Delta Dental's uh, back office. Uh, you know, well, there's full floors of, of cubes in some buildings. Ours uh, has their data center in it uh, on the first floor uh, with a dock. And, the, you know, the, the, the billing uh, uh, was handled through this facility as well. So if you get the bills in the mail, you know, blah, 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 they're, they're, uh, their mailing services were, were taken care of in this building uh, as well. So it was it was built to cater to them for their uh, corporate campus. Cole and, and John, what's your pricing guidance on that? Uh, you know, on a on a sale basis, we're probably in the $170 a foot range. Is that negotiable? Perhaps. You know, on a lease basis, John, what are we about a buck, 65 bucks, 70 full service or so? Yeah, that that's where they were uh, with with Delta Dental. So, um, if we were to go that direction, uh, full triple net basis, no landlord responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no debt on the building, and, and we have the ability to carry back too. So, yeah. very well healed um, owners out of Silicon Valley. Yeah. So it's not a sale lease back, right? If, if to purchase, no, it, no, no, it's not. It, it is. It's an owner user or a uh, straight lease. So it's more so an owner user opportunity. Okay. Yeah, okay. but we can again deliver two more buildings next to us. So we're sixty. There's a hundred, and then another 
I think uh, 60 or 70 next door. So it was their full campus. Wow. Which is what we're starting to see, unfortunately, in uh, probably across all markets, but especially in our markets. A lot of back office, we're, we're seeing big chunks of space come back for office now. You know, half a million square feet for uh, Centene Insurance uh, hit the market the past year. And we're, we're, see we're seeing these big campuses come back. Not like San Francisco. Well, we're doing much better than San Francisco. San Francisco has probably... 20 years of positive absorption to, to catch up to where they need to be. Wow. Um, but, uh, but you know, we're doing a lot better than them, but our market more, more so caters to, to back office, emergency, you know, call center type space, data centers, that kind of stuff, since we're about two hours from, from San Francisco. So, so is a rent a dollar 70, uh, full service or triple net? It, it's yeah. Yeah. So, so that, is uh going to be triple net yep and the triple nets are what we'll have to get back to you we're we're, we're still penciling those numbers right now um this is real time that's where we're, we're you're actually getting the first look on this um even before we're launching uh just because we're we're still uh going through uh the opex to get that figured out but that's the guidance at this point and yes uh it's negotiable as cole said yeah Excellent. Thank you. What do we have next? Oh, okay. So, I, um, this also is, um, it, it started out as a leased investment. This is John Sexton. This is a um, Goodwill uh, property in Vacaville, California. Um, it's about, uh, you know, 40 minutes south of uh, Sacramento, uh, 40 minutes north of Walnut Creek. And um, it's twelve thousand nine hundred and forty square feet, approximately. It's uh, it's their um, it's a retail store for them, and they um, they they it's a it's a pretty good site. It's um, great freeway access, excellent visibility, great parking. So Goodwill is uh, it's an interesting company, of course. They um, uh, I represent the San Francisco East Bay uh, conglomerate. So about a fifty million dollar company it was a leased investment two weeks ago. Um, they've decided now that um, Goodwill's actually having an issue uh, getting personnel, and yeah. so they're 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 having challenges, serious challenges actually, staffing their facilities. So they've actually halted their expansion at this point, and they're going they're going to go ahead and liquidate a couple of facilities just to generate cash. Um, the San Francisco East Bay contingent uh, merged about two, about a year and a half ago, and it's about a fifty million dollar company, but. Um, this is a corporate signature for that, uh, but uh, and I could probably talk him into a five-year stay at a buck sixty a foot triple net. Um, but so it could be a lease investment, but they prefer to sell it to an owner user and just vacate. Uh, it was four point two million two weeks ago, wow. so they repriced it as a result of possibly moving out at to an owner user, almost a million out, a million off. The staffing issue is that is that due to the minimum wage? You know, Cole, it's um Degrees. pretty much everybody now in California is at twenty bucks a foot, twenty bucks, excuse me, an hour. Yeah. Um, and it's because the fast food restaurant contingent, thanks to our mayor, um, <laughs> has raised the minimum wage uh, competition wise, really to everybody. Yeah. Because you can't just have a fast food restaurant at 20 bucks an hour and everybody else at 15 or whatever is in a, then you just steal the the employee base to the fast food side so everybody's really at that rate and um you know so it's pervasive uh the staffing is unique because here they they typically hire retirees mm -hmm. or, or some of the underprivileged um and they're just there's just not enough people going back to work yeah, yeah. That's the real reason. Yeah. Good property, though, well located. Um, Thank you, Don. Any, anyone else have any more questions? Okay, if not, we'll move along. That's good. All right, John Adderholt, you're up. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, John. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just grabbing a bite to eat. Um, 
All right, we have three properties that we are about to bring to market. Um, they're all single, uh, single tenant net lease properties, and they're not on the Corfac platform yet. I don't want to get in trouble for that because they're just not finished. We're we're still doing some final edits, pictures, things like that, but they're ready enough to uh, join this call. So the first one, as you can see on the screen, is a tractor supply in, um, well, it looks like Leicester, Massachusetts. They pronounce it Leicester up there. Mm -hmm. And it's outside of what looks like Wor Worcester, but it, they say Worcester up there. So it depends on where you are, how you say these things. But it's a, it's a rare New England, greater Boston tractor supply. So sometimes you have investment buyers who might not consider that tenant. They might look at this because just that New England location. Uh, we did do a blend extend, so there's plenty of lease term. I think 13 years remaining on this. It's hard to price these. We've talked about cap rates in the past. We're 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 trying to adjust. I mean, this would have been a five cap a couple years ago. Uh, maybe maybe it's a six or six and a quarter, but we're we're putting a premium on it because there's not a lot of that type of product available in in these kinds of New England markets. The next property, I'm not driving, yeah, is an advanced auto. Um, there's over six years remaining. We uh, renewed early with them. I think actually there's closer to seven years remaining. This is in DeMott, Indiana. Um, I know it, Jonathan and company are in Chicago. This is sort of on the outskirts of what might be considered Chicagoland, south of Gary, Indiana, in sort of that part of Indiana between uh, Indianapolis and Chicago. Um, it's, a, it's a good little small town, auto part market, attractive little store, uh, good small price point. A lot of 1031 exchange buyers will consider this kind of thing, you know, under $2 million, 1.5 1. Is, is a nice bite-sized deal for a lot of investment buyers. So put this in front of any clients that might be open to that. And then finally, we have a Sheets. This is actually a rare uh, triple net lease. Sheets, it is not a ground lease. And there's not very many. I would say there, there's virtually none of these available. For those of you not familiar with Sheets, they're sort of the, the uh, they're similar to Wawa. I would consider them a step up from Wawa because they have substantial indoor dining. Uh, they started in Pennsylvania. They're, I think they're over a thousand locations now. They're expanding rapidly uh, in Ohio and moving into Kentucky, Indiana, Michigan. They've been in um, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina for a while. Uh, so it's it's that fueling station uh, C store concept, but they really take their food very seriously, and that's where they make their money and earn their reputation. A lot of people love sheets, uh, and and that is a rare triple net lease and not a ground lease. That means there's certain depreciation advantages that a lot of your investment buyers will be aware of. Uh, a lot won't be aware of, and you could tell them about the the, the depreciation that's available here. Uh, fueling usually has some uh, type of accelerated depreciation available as well. Um, so that's the sheets. It's outside of Cleveland. Uh, Sheffield Lake is, is greater Cleveland is where that is up on, up on the lake. John, just was the tractor supply triple net? It is, uh, you know, double net, triple net. Uh, landlord is responsible for roof structure and, and some parking. Uh, it's it's more or less the standard tractor supply lease, although the tractor supply leases do vary a little bit. So, um, you know, depending on how you want to define it, uh, it, the tenant's certainly responsible for the vast majority of maintenance, but landlord has a couple of limited responsibilities. There is a roof warranty still in place through Firestone. Any protection on uh, increase in taxes resulting from the sale? Say that again? Mm. Any protection on the increase in taxes on the triple net side of it resulting from the sale? Well, I mean, the, the tenant is responsible for, for all taxes. Yeah. I don't know how tractor supply does that. 
but uh, that's fantastic. John, are, wh when were these buildings built, the uh, tractor supply and also the advanced auto? The advance we um, is about ten years old. Okay, so we these are that, these are they're, they're that's on a renewal term now. We renewed early with advance. We did a blend and extend where we gave a, a, a very small reduction on rent, five percent actually, and then they um, basically rebooted their initial term uh, for I believe eight years, and we've held it for a couple more years. This is these are all three of these are from an affiliate investment arm. That's why I'm saying with things like we. So we're actually the landlord here, uh, a century affiliate. But uh, yeah, that one's about 10 years old. The tractor supply, we did not buy brand new. It's about 12, 13 years old. Um, the OMs have the exact year. And then the sheets, I believe is 2009 construction. So I consider them all not new, but not very old either. Kind of that, you know, Second generation, the, and that and that is an important point. I mean, the, the sheets is an absolute triple net lease, but the other two, you know, there, there's going to be the, any buyer is going to have to be thinking about the roof in five, six years, things like that. So that'll that'll impact pricing, of course. But it but it also shows that the tenants are doing well in the location with you know recent extensions. Correct. All three have a similar story. So with both tractor supply and advance, we proactively did, you know, a blend and extend where we were in the middle of the initial term, but we, we wanted to get that. We, we reached out to the tenant and they were willing to, um, you know, renew early for minor concessions. The sheets, we wanted the full rent increase and we knew they were going to be very likely to renew which they did do. So while they're up, they'll be just right now, there's just over five years remaining, which is basically the initial term plus the five year, five year uh, option that they exercised a couple of weeks ago. And we do know the corporate people at Sheets very well because they're, they're headquartered outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and, and so we, you know, we've been to like Penguin games with them and Pirate games with them and kind of yucked it up and, um, so they're they're really aggressive right now in Ohio, and and so we 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 were very confident about this location. The only thing that's a little quirky about it is what I said earlier. Most of their deals are ground leases, and this one isn't because of the developer they're running around with in Cleveland in that time period it was just doing triple net. Thank you. Now I'm looking else. Thank you, John. Appreciate your input. What do we have next? All right, so questions, comments. I think that's all the presentations that we have on the slide deck here. Um, there was one other person that was gonna present, I believe from Miami. Lost my email here, so. Um, Alex Bernaldo, did you still wanna present your properties? We actually went hard on the deal um, last Friday. Mm -hmm. So I was going to present it, but I have a backup offer for a million dollars more. It was a church with about almost seven acres. And uh, we had about 20 offers and we listed for 8.5. It needs about $3 million in improvements. And we have gotten so many offers, all cash. So another church went in and put an all, all cash offer, which was accepted by the board. And I didn't think they were gonna move that quickly. They just submitted a letter that they're going to go hard and forget about the inspection. This is a very high demand area in Miami. And it's like, it's what's happening in Miami since the pandemic, you know, people overpaying for properties and there's just not enough properties to find. So yeah, I was going to present a property. <laughs> Did that, it, so it ends up being an owner user property? Yes, actually it could be a redevelopment property, but this is a, the demand is mostly for owner users, a school and uh, churches. Where is it in Miami? In the horse country area, in the Kendall area. Okay. 127 okay. and 65th Street is a church that was built back in 1993, 19, no, 95. And uh, it's just been going small, small. So another mega church is buying it right now, which is good. They show proof of funds and it's all cash, which is great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, any of our international representatives want to talk about what you're seeing? Overseas, looks like Mark Van Kempten is on from the Netherlands. 
You want to share anything about what you're seeing in your market? Sure. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you uh, doing? Mark? Hope my camera is working. Yes, it's working. So it's here uh, half past uh, six in the evening. <laughs> So a different time uh, 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 situation. Yeah, the market here in the, in the, in the Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, is going upwards. What I see is that a lot more um, demand from investors is now uh, happening uh, in comparison to, let's say, uh, the last, uh, especially half past uh, 2022, and uh, the first half year of 2023, um, we see uh, again a lot of demand from uh, investors. Uh, logistics, light industrial is still uh, going strong here in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, offices is not that worse as uh, uh, in the United States uh, regarding vacancy, but still, uh, home working is also here an issue in the Netherlands. Uh, vacancy rates are, uh, I think, uh, below the 10%. Uh, from my understanding in the, the United States, is it uh, up to 20 or 30%. Um, the residential investments uh, we're, uh, are here confronting with some regulations by um, the government. So that is um, uh, downsizing demands uh, regarding residential investments. And retail, we see also vacancy rates uh, going up again, especially in the high streets uh, in, the, in the Netherlands. So that's um, um, a small part of what's happening here in the, in the Netherlands and especially in the Amsterdam area and greater uh, Amsterdam area, where we are, um, which are uh, is the, the core business of uh, Fris uh, Bedrijfsmakelaars Agency. Mark, what, what are the interest rates running there? Uh, it depends, of course, loan to value uh, and also uh, the period of uh, loans. Uh, but say average is now a little bit lower. From my understanding, it's, uh, it's between, uh, um, let's say, 6.2, uh, 6.7% from my understanding in general. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Hey, Jared. Yes. So I've got an investor. He's looking for a QSR, quick service restaurant, anywhere in the country. He would like the interest or the cap rate to be um, north of 6.75%. If any of you guys have any freestanding retail restaurants with a drive through preferably, um, that would help. Thank you, Phil. Does anyone else have any buyer requirements right now that they want to throw out to the group? Jared, I guess one. Sorry, go ahead. I I got a guy, and he's we've done business before with him in Reno, but uh, ten to fifteen million industrial is a preference, uh, and that would be Phil. I was going to call you down in uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale area. Potentially Las Vegas and Reno market. So Nevada and uh, Arizona. It's kind of where he's looking. So, and his target's probably September of this year. 10 to 15? 10 to 15 million all cash. Retail, office, uh, industrial, does it matter? Industrial is a preference. Okay. John, did you have something to add? I was just going to confirm Phil's criteria. You said 6.75 cap rate. That is correct, John. All right. Well, it's a little high, but um, it's a little Adam, high. Adam may have something in our office. I'll, I'll Especially what, any price I just point? Sold, um, yeah, his price point would be under 10 million. Under 10, okay. Yeah, I just sold a Chipotle for 4.6 cap, so that didn't apply to him. <laughs> right, right. All right. Um, looks like we have a couple more international people. Philippe, you comfortable talking about what we're seeing in Belgium? Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, nice to meet everyone. Um, 
let's say it's my first uh, meeting here. Um, I think you used to see my colleague, maybe Philip Hurdens. I think you saw him in Milan. Some of you saw him there, if I'm right, in Milan, in Italy. Maybe no, am I wrong? Yeah. So, so it's my first meeting here. I'm just uh, uh, listening and trying to see what uh, what what you guys are up to, so I can uh, be more prepared for the for the next uh, meetings. Once once you want to ask me about uh, uh, the market situation here in Belgium, but let's say that uh, we are a neighbor of uh, uh, Netherlands, so uh, it will be a little bit similar uh, what we uh, what we and them uh, do on the market. Uh, let's say that it's a it's a problem at the moment. Uh, the office the offices is a, is a real uh, difficulty in Belgium. I suppose it's everywhere, but it's really difficult after the COVID crisis. Uh, no one needs uh, office uh, or go really small, and it's really difficult uh, to find potential uh, tenants uh, for renting out or buying buildings, uh, office buildings at the moment. The industrial same industrial market is doing well. Let's say same industrial be between the thousand and uh, five thousand square meters is doing well, and then there is the logistic market, who is also uh, not not a lot of um, not a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of vacancy. Uh, I see with the big owners who own big buildings, um, the big boxes as you call them, ten to twenty, thirty thousand square meters. There is also a, a difficulty in Belgium uh, uh, to to try to, um, to find uh, yes, the, the the good tenants for that. But I see that my colleague Dirk is also in a call, so maybe with his experience and his grey hair, he could. Uh, well, maybe... hello everyone. Uh, some of you I met together with Philip uh, Gerdens in Milan. Um, well, I can add something to the information that my colleague Philip already gave. Um, important is that there is still a demand for logistics in, in Belgium, as we are yeah, together with the Netherlands, the gateway to Europe, thanks to our uh, seaports. But um, demand for logistics dropped re uh, in, in, dropped in enormously in in the, the in uh, the first quarter of this year. Uh, demand for new properties and properties to to rent. Uh, I think it it raised it it fell down with almost 60, 70 percent. Uh, nevertheless, last year we achieved Azorian properties, thanks also to Philip, to um, realize one of the most important uh, logistic deals in Belgium, as uh, we let it uh, a, a new property uh, of. Uh, Prologis, uh, uh around twenty-five thousand square meters to a uh, uh, to a huge uh, uh, worldwide logistic uh, automotive player. Today, the the name is still confidential, but we achieved the the prime yet, prime rent uh, in Belgium ever uh, on logistics. It was sixty-eight euro a square meter, which is for Belgium extremely high, except. You at least something uh, on the farmer side, so that was a nice deal, and uh, um, we see that demand on logistics is still there, uh, strong demand, but also there the the yields are the cap rates are going slightly up. Uh, the past we we spoke about five point two, today I guess there was somewhere between five point eight and six point two. Uh, office market is. Um, is um, not very active today, but there is demand, and the semi industrial it goes on uh, as ever, uh, and it turns on, on a normal rotation. So that's a little bit the update for for Belgium. Uh, in the future, we'll have definitely some uh, candidates for the United States, as we are in contact with a number of investors that also look abroad. So on that we keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you. Very, Dirk. Appreciate, very much appreciated. Dirk. Dirk, I have a question. Anyone else on the call want to add anything, Jeff? Is, is the velocity increasing in Las Vegas? What are you seeing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not muted. Okay. I mean, I think it's just really what we're seeing with rates. I mean, that's obviously affecting all of us, but we're kind of back in that same pattern where we were late 
you know, that second half of 2023. And it's basically mirroring it now in 2024, where we're seeing that jump from call it three, seven, three, seven, five up to four, six, five, you know, over about a four month, you know, basically about a four month, five month period. And again, it's, it's really interesting of how similar the, you know, the, the rate of increase and everything like that is. And it, it's kind of pointing towards rates pushing up possibly as high as 5% again. And obviously for our business, that's, you know, creating that stagnancy. And I think it's getting, you already had an undersupply of product and an undersupply of buyers for that matter that were willing to transact with where the, the sellers were really trying to uh, chase, you know, legacy pricing. So now you've got yet another period of stagnancy as people kind of readjust. And so you, you're, I think you're just kind of resetting again. I think that market activity, I mean, I saw the article post, I think it was on Globe Street that showed, you know, that we were down, I think we were at about 26% volume on office sales last year. They, they were showing investment sales of uh, 4.6 billion. And normally that's 19.96. Again, I'm going from memory on that. I don't have that in front of me. So don't quote me on the exact numbers there, but just again, a, a just showing again, what a significant decrease, but we're not seeing anything that's going to give us a, a change in that momentum yet, um, really. And so you've still got that situation where only people that are really going to enter the market are people that have an absolute are forced into a sales situation or maybe have a commodity product that's that wouldn't be as competitive on a on normalized market but can capture some buyer demand now because of the lack of competitive supply so you know that's one comment it's just i mean that this this does present an opportunity for commodities you know lower quality properties to possibly achieve you know some uh some sale activity that maybe otherwise would be in a uh, would be challenged in a, in a more normalized market. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything to add or should we wrap this up and go try to make some money? I had a, I had a question for Dirk. This is uh, David Boyd in Houston. Um, I just pulled up your website. So were, did you represent Prologis in that transaction you mentioned? No. In the, in the former days when I used to work for DTZ, uh, I most of the time represented on exclusive or co-exclusive base, uh, whether together the GLL, whether together with Cashman, uh, always co for Prologis. Uh, in this situation, uh, we can work uh, for Prologis as a third party, as in Belgium, they always work co-exclusive together with uh, CBRE and GLL. Uh, but we um, were instructed by the, the tenant, which is really one of the biggest five automotive concerns in the world. Uh, but at the end, we get uh, we get paid 80% of our fees by Prologis and uh, the other 20% of the fees uh, where um, split to Sibri and GLL. Okay, so did you have a listing on the property, or you were you? I, I didn't clearly get the answer. Did you list the property, or did did you represent the tenant in the transaction? Have, have we represent the tenant, but we had right. already the the property to let. You had both. You had both sides. Yeah, we had both sides. Yeah, and then. Well, then uh, we had both sides. We had the property to let, but as third party agents, uh, my contacts uh, with Prologis date about 30 years, 20, 30 years. Uh, and um, we had a demand, but it was an exclusive demand, but we weren't paid by the by the, by the the tenant. So uh, we had not uh, an issue regarding the ontology. I, I, was, I was just curious about Prologis because um, a large number of our member firms in the U.S. work with Prologis. Nobody represents them. They work with everybody, but they're, they're the biggest. But they're they're a big part of our business in Houston. Mm -hmm. I know in L.A. I know in Portland. I know in Seattle. Our members have all worked with Prologis. So um, it's nice to tie that back together. And, um, you know, as our member firms are interviewing for new listings with institutional owners, <laughs> I think we can play on that as a network. Uh, we cannot yes. say we represent them, but we can show the network experience 
yeah. in, in, that's, in many, many markets. That's that's the reason why I mentioned this deal. Uh, Thank you. As, as it can you be used in, in some pitches that we did already work with them. So, uh, yeah. But we just, my colleague and me, Philip, we just lost a last instruction from, for example, uh, another US company, but not uh, a logistic owner, but um, a logistic uh, company. We uh, were uh, negotiating and looking for locations for heavy, heavy, heavy logistics. Harvey Logistics is a huge US company and he's the, the main um, transport company for McDonald's. Um, and uh, we made already selections. We made uh, some visits. Uh, we were in negotiation with the developer uh, to adapt an existing building, which was new. And uh, he was already, uh, he has already less or more agreed if it would fit, they, they would invest in the in the in the cool in the in the cooling and the fridges. And uh, at the end, uh, within heavy, they decided to go with the pitch on the market. And in that pitch, we we lost uh, whether the building was already <laughs> chosen, and we lost uh, the pitch towards I think uh, Flip helped me EPMC no. Uh, Colliers? Colliers International. Yeah, Colliers International. Now, what happened? Uh, our contact person uh, with the developer in Belgium uh, left that developer and he went to Colliers. And then, um, as we couldn't, <laughs> uh, we, are, we were already a member of Corfac that we informed. But at the end, uh, they choose for a U.S. company in Belgium uh, to uh, proceed uh, the lead. I didn't mean to take the conversation away from investment properties, but I thought your transaction uh, obviously is very significant and with Prologis. But I, I had to do the conversion, but I think it's about two hundred and forty thousand square feet range, um, at a very high rent. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, that's a shockingly high rent. That is. <laughs> Are you I'm retiring, Dirk? <clears throat> All right. Well, anyone else have anything to add or do we move on? I appreciate everyone's contributions. All right. Well, thank you all very much for your participation and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Yeah. 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 Well, well, one, one question. One question. Uh, for the first time in, in, in 20, 30 years, Panatoni uh, will, uh, will enter the Belgian market. Um, is there some people within um, Corfac that already did some business with Panatoni? Yeah, I have a very strong relationship with Panatoni. Yes. We, okay. we do in Houston. Uh, they do in Los Angeles. So uh, you can hit up Jared or myself by email and I can make some my my contacts are the are with the regional people, not back to the corporate office, but Jared or the Claven company in LA uh, may be able to tie you back to the corporate office. Okay. Now I can, can because I, I, I will try to strengthen contacts with them as I met them five, six years ago, seven years ago when I was negotiating for Kellogg's. And suddenly popped up the people of um, Anatoni, and they tried to involve and to do the deal. Uh, they didn't at the end, but uh, it's it's a strong company that now enters the, the Belgian market. So for me, it would be important if I uh, uh, I would have the the right contacts. I know the people in Belgium, but support from abroad will always uh, be helpful and welcome. Derek, if you shoot me an email, I'll make an, an email introduction for you. Yeah, I will do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, well, yeah. no thanks. All right. Well, everybody have a great day and look forward to seeing everyone in person soon. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good job, Jared. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.